All right, what is up everybody? Tbot once again here with another exciting tutorial on the latest version of my feedback machine version 1.4. Uh, I know I initially said that version 1.3 would be the first one released on Juice Bar, but you know, the holidays are the holidays and it is now officially the new year and I'm excited to say that any day now this thing should be dropping on Juice Bar, so it is time for a slightly updated tutorial on the newest version of this plugin and how it functions. So without further ado, let me try to just do this in a quick one take and uh, yeah, let's dive right into it. Really quickly, I'm just gonna go over kind of the uh, the end-to-end -end, uh, options that are here within the feedback machine. This is your base level with, uh, with no changed parameters. I've made some variations on it here, which we will go over here in a few minutes. But basically, um, you've got your top layer and your bottom layer opacity. This is not something that you'll really see until there's more animation. Um, your auto mask will change whether the, uh, the whites or the blacks are where the uh, other under layers are showing up in, and you can invert that auto mask here as well. You have top layer pixelation, so you can control the pixel layer on the top. You can change the density of those pixels uh, on the top. Keep in mind that you also have that same pixel, pixel option for the bottom here and you can, you can change just the underlayer pixelation uh, while still leaving the original on top. Um, just to kind of sidestep for a second, the way that this uh, plugin works is essentially it takes whatever your clip it is and it splits it into three layers. You have your top layer, you have your bottom layer, and then you have a feedback layer which sits underneath. And so instead of having to have three layers sitting on top of one another inside of a column and doing all this stuff that way, by dragging this effect on top of that, you're essentially splitting this clip into a three-layer clip uh, and being able to control each layer independently here. Uh, as I said, you can control the top layer saturation so you can make it black and white. You can see those nice trails that it's showing there. Uh, you can adjust the greens, take the greens out. You can take the blues out on the top. It's really whatever you want when it comes down to color. You can invert the color on the top layer, et cetera, et cetera. On the under bottom layer, you also have uh, a opacity setting. You have the same auto mask settings. You have the pixelation setting that I just mentioned. In addition, you also have a drip, uh, which allows you to kind of create different blotch sizes, which will appear on your animations uh, and create kind of a cool drip effect within your feedback. Um, you also have blur effects, uh, adjusting different types of blur to create harder or softer uh, uh, feedback. So here, I don't know if it'll show it to me. There you go. So you can see that the feedback blurs and kind of gives you uh, less sharp def definement on the feedback. Uh, if you keep going down, you also have control over the bottom hue separately so that you can create a separate color underneath. More on that later. Again, separate brightness and contrast control, saturation, and everything else. You can pull the reds, greens, or blues out. You can also invert the color of the bottom layer, which can create some pretty cool effects as well. Um, the biggest thing to play with mostly though, and most people, most people are using this for, is the feedback layer underneath. And this is where like the meat and potatoes of this particular plugin is. And uh, let me just dive right into this. Um, you know, and with this, uh, let me try to show you guys a little bit better of an example here with some movement. So um, we're gonna go ahead and drop in these meta balls. As you can already see, <laughs> there goes my logo. Um, this is just the default setting, okay? This is what it'll look like the second that you drag it on. Um, you know, in this case, the meta balls that I'm using have just the color changing on, a, on the hue uh, at a set speed, and that's what's creating the feedback underneath it. But if we come back over here, if we want to adjust this, you'll see that we can adjust our blur, which creates a different blurring effect on the background, and you can create, you know, less particle or you can create more harsh feedback there. Um, you can adjust the Gaussian there as well. Um, you can adjust the feedback direction which affects the left and the right direction of the feedback. This is a great thing to tie to a knob. Uh, you can affect the scale on the X, or you can affect the direction on the Y, as well as the scale on the Y. So this allows you to create just by itself really just different crazy uh, feedback patterns um, without, much effort, without, without much effort. You also have rotation here, which allows you to control the master rotation of the feedback which as you can see, creates a whole other landscape of options. Um, now, if you look here, we also have something called twirl. This is something I added in this latest version. This is similar to rotation, except it kind of fills the edges of the screen a little bit better. 
Uh, and it is a slightly different effect. Uh, you know, this is giving you like your size of your twirl. You can have a small one, big one. Uh, you can choose the direction and the speed all the way up to ridiculous. Um, I also turned on something called the vacuum, which, uh, which sucks all of your pixels towards the center. So all of your feedback will be going towards the center. And you can adjust the speed intensity of that vacuum and where that vacuum is actually placed within your frame. So you can have it be in the upper corner, bottom left, center, however you want. Again, the feedback pixelation is also there. And just to show you, for example, you can turn on the pixelation on the bottom and that's how you get this really cool, uh, you know, pixelated feedback look, which you've seen in a, a number of my clips. If I turn on the drip and I turn up the drip size, you'll see how that also affects the clip look. So I'll go ahead and turn those two things back off. Um, and let's just go ahead and keep going down the list of feedback effects. So like I said, we've also now got this dot option. This is something new in this version. And if I turn off the uh, pixelation and I set the dot scale a little bit here, you can start seeing uh, what the dot feedback does. I'll try to give you a better example here. So if I do this one, and I come back here to our dot scale, you can actually see that the dots that are coming off of the, the lines here are getting bigger and smaller. And this has different effects depending on the different clips that you run through, and I'll show you a few variations on this here in a minute. Uh, you also have the ability to mirror the feedback that's in the background, so this can be really interesting. Let's go ahead and go back to this example in my feedback machine. And uh, we can now, as of this version, we can mirror the feedback that's in the background. This is a really cool effect. Um, and you can also affect where that mirror lies in the background on the X as well as the Y, which can create all these other crazy patterns. Um, you also have the in and out control as you usually would with your mirrors, and that creates all kinds of craziness. Um, right-clicking defaults these all back to what I perceive to be a good default. Um, but yeah, you also have a quad mirror on top of that, which, you know, allows you to make it even more ridiculous. Um, obviously, kind of sort of one or the other there. Even the mirror quad on the background is just quite a bit, but it allows you to just turn it on and off, and you can see just the crazy effect that I'm getting from that right there. Um, you also have hue and saturation control. Uh, if you remember on the er earlier version of the plugin, it would allow you to kind of, when you turned it on for the first time, it would be wiggling the RGB all over the place. I have now turned that uh, off by default. Um, there is an on-off switch for that as well. But hue, the hue and saturation allows you to, uh, to do things like do those crazy rainbow color chases. And uh, you can adjust the intensity of which those trails are coming off and whether they're one color or whether they're like multiple multiple colors, rainbow colors, and if they're chasing in one direction or another very quickly. Um, an example of that, uh, let's see, would be maybe here uh, with this clip where you can see that the rainbow colors are coming off. Um, I've made a few different examples of this, which I'll show you here in a few minutes. Um, but going back, other than hue and saturation control, which of course you can control the saturation of the feedback. So the feedback can be black and white if you want it to, while everything else remains color. Um, you also have RGB master. This is, this is where I've changed things a little bit. And by default, when you turn this on, you'll notice that your, your offsets are set a little bit. So you have your X offset. This is what allows you to split the X off to the right or the left. Same thing with the green or the blue. Um, but you also have the red shift, which is where it is automatically shifting on the X left and right. Uh, this is useful um, for creating looks like this, you know, where you can split the individual colors out of things. Uh, let's go ahead and just take a couple examples here. So if I turn all these back down and I turn this back off, you'll see that, okay, it's now it's just white. The second that I turn on the uh, RGB master, it's going to split those colors up a little bit, and it's going to allow me to take the blue and split it way out. If I want the green to go in the other direction, I can, um, for example. Or if I don't want either of those, um, I can actually turn on the auto shift, which is what the shift is. It allows it to shift however many pixels I want on the X. And then same thing for the Y. So if I want to have the, uh, you know, shifting up and down on the Y, I can do that. Um, same thing here, I can, I can lock the, uh, the offset of the blue or the green on the Y up or down as I wish. 
This is useful for various other things and just creating those crazy colored, specific colored looks that you want um, really easily. Uh, you can also affect the speed of those shift wiggles. Um, that's essentially what this is, but for the most part, that actually covers all the base parameters within this. Now, let me show you a few examples that I've made with this. So I've gone ahead and just lift this together real quick in order to show you these examples stacked on top of one another. Keep in mind that you can drag the feedback machine into your actual layers, or you could drag it on top of a clip. And it is absolutely suggested by me that though this would be killer for live performance if you had a controller to tie to all the parameters and turn it on and off for your entire composition, that'd be fun and all. But in my opinion, it's a lot better to fine tune individual looks using this and then setting them up, say, either in columns or putting my effect on top of the clip itself and making these by clip. As you can see here, this Metaballs has just got its color changing, and if I select this little setup here, you'll see how the color changing affects the feedback that's coming off the bottom. It's obviously just kind of tracing whatever color was hitting it. If we look at this example, you'll see that this, again, is created by my feedback machine. Drastically different in how it's set up. Um, you know, this, this is mostly uh, playing on the uh, Hue RGB master um, being on and off. Um, so in this case, um, you know, if I, if I turned the RGB master on and then I set it up so that my red was offset in one direction and my green was set off in the other direction and my blue was set off in another direction, you can see how it changes that. Now, if you look at this third example, um, this is just a sine wave. Uh, here um, with this feedback machine added in on top of it. And you can see how that is affected quite simply. Um, if I come here and if I actually come to this original clip and drop shadow is not even really necessary in this case, but um, if I turn that on, you can kind of see this actually needs an auto mask as well. And this is a perfect example of something where I would want to add an auto mask before it actually gets placed on there. Make sure that you set your contrast to 100. And now you can see how that has changed this drastically. Um, auto masks and drop shadows are like your best as best as friends, um, especially, um, especially when you're doing things like this in order to make your top clip pop the most. So again, just a sine wave with its frequency changing at a certain rate and a certain speed. And then on this case, the feedback machine has got um, really nothing else going for it. You got your hue direction so you can speed up or slow down the hue. Um, you can change which int how intense it is. You can adjust the RGB shift in master. In this case, if I wanted to have the red shift to left and right on the X, I could do that. And you can see how that changes the dynamic of this clip. Um, moving on to our next example. This one's quite simple. This is actually just, you know, like a slightly off-white uh, linescape shifted to a certain direction. And then you've got uh, you know, these particular settings, no vacuum or anything turned on, just quite simple. If you come to this example, um, this is where you have um, some pixelation turned on for the bottom layer. Uh, if you look at the effect here, you'll see that the top layer's opacity, if I turn it off, it's all just a pixelated mess. But the second you turn that back on, it pastes it back on top and you've got pretty stuff. Again, if you turn off the bottom opacity, you won't have the pixelation effect on there anymore. And if I turn the pixelation off, you can see the difference in the clip there. Same thing for this one. Um, this is again just, and again, I'd like to thank uh, Alex Luma, or Luma Visual, for providing me with a couple of these clips. Um, I had a few of these, and I don't remember where a couple of them came from, so apologies if I don't mention you for you creating this content that I'm using to base this plugin on, but you know, if you want to give me a shout, I'll, uh, I'll definitely give you a mention within the plugin. But as you can see here, this is uh, actually just with a little bit of mirroring as well. Um, if I come down here and I go to the, uh, the mirror, but you see turning it off gives us now this effect as opposed to this is really cool. Um, you know, without the mirroring being there, turn the mirror back on and you can actually adjust the, the in and the out placement of the mirror. Um, so we can put it into a slightly different spot if we want to, or we can shift it so that it is further down or wherever we want to place that background mirror effect in order to create the perfect look for us. Um, again, if I turn the mirror back off, quad mirror gives you what a quad mirror would look like in this case. It's a little intense, um, 
you get the point. Again, same thing with the hue and saturation. If I turn that actually back off, you'll see how it, the trails and everything else that are just coming off of him are red, and it just stayed red, which is a nice thing if you're trying to get some color control over things. But regardless, you can get really, really tight control color over the trails and whatever other effects that you come up with. And then last but not least, we have this jellyfish clip. You know, this is the original. Um, you know, I just put a color eyes and an auto mask on it once again. Uh, you know, and why not? Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do a drop shadow again, because drop shadow is king. And uh, let's make sure that it's, you can get its strength all the way up to 100. You can see how that makes the clip actually pop um, and how much different it is. Uh, try a couple of these other ones here, and you'll see how they affect this clip as well. They're all vastly different, and you really do want to fine tune each thing that you use this for, uh, for the clip. Like I said, you're not going to really want to use this too, too live, even though it probably would be a hell of a lot of fun. But with that, I'm signing off here. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial on version 1.4 of my feedback machine. And I hope that uh, you make some really cool stuff with this because I've been wanting to share my secret sauce. And I'd like to thank the Resolume team and Wire for giving me an outlet to be able to do that for you guys. So please, please, please support and uh, join the new Discord, uh, which is linked on the Juice Bar page, uh, which, which is where you can get real-time help from me and other beta users of this project um, to try to help you hone this in and really make the most of your investment with this feedback machine. Thanks again, everybody, and I hope you have a great day or evening wherever the hell you're VJing. On to the next one.